This story began in 1909 when Peyton Rouse at the Rockefeller Institute discovered a virus that causes sarcomas in chickens, Rouse sarcoma virus. It was a complete mystery as to how this uh, virus caused cancer until 1970 when Stephen Martin at the University of California, Berkeley, uh, isolated a mutant of Rouse sarcoma virus that w demonstrated temperature sensitive transformation. In other words, the virus could create a cancer cell at one temperature, but not at another. Here's an illustration uh, of what Stephen Martin had discovered. These are normal chicken fibroblasts blowing, growing in culture. And here's what those fibroblasts look like a mere 24 hours after having been infected with Rouse sarcoma virus. What Martin discovered was that if he infected the cells at 35 degrees with this mutant, the cells transformed. But as soon as the cells were shifted to a higher temperature, they reverted to the normal state. You could cycle the cells back and forth between the transformed and the normal state just by shifting the temperature. To a geneticist, this meant that there was at least one gene that was clearly responsible for eliciting the neoplastic transformation. We came to call these genes oncogenes, and the gene in Rouse sarcoma virus was dubbed SARC because it elicits sarcomas. In due course, we learned that Rouse sarcoma virus has four genes, only four genes, arrayed along its RNA genome as illustrated here. Three of these genes are responsible for viral rep reproduction. The fourth, the SARC gene, is responsible for cancer, but only the induction of cancer. It is not required for replication of the virus. The seeming irrelevance of SARC to the welfare of the Rouse sarcoma virus inspired uh, the, our research group in San Francisco uh, to ask whether this gene might actually be acquired from a normal cell, that it is an accident of nature. That proved to be the case. At some time in the past, during the course of replication, the virus that became Rouse sarcoma virus acquired a cellular gene and inserted it into its own genome, creating the viral oncogene, SARC. At first it seemed that SARC might be a mere curiosity. But many other retroviral oncogenes were identified, and in almost every instance, these two were found to be acquired from the normal cell. The cellular genes that gave rise to the viral oncogenes became known as proto-oncogenes. This led to a larger hypothesis. If a change in a proto-oncogene can create a viral oncogene, why could not the same sort of thing occur within the cell without the intervention of a virus? Why couldn't proto-oncogenes become the progenitors of cellular oncogenes?